Thank you, Vaughn. Appreciate it. And for more on Tuesday's election there in the state of Alabama, Josh Schwerin, Communications Director for the Democratic Super PAC Priorities USA and former spokesman for Hillary Clinton's campaign. We also have Lauren Zelt, Republican Strategist and Managing Director for Marketing Agency FP1 Strategies. So much to talk about in so little time here. Lauren, quickly here. Roy Moore uh, really not doing a lot. And in some cases, most cases, that may mean they felt fairly comfortable. Yeah, you know, that's it's it's a non-traditional way to end a campaign, right? I mean, generally you, you see candidates doing exactly what Doug Moore is doing. Um, you know, they're doing fly arounds all across the state. Um, so this is a very non-conventional uh, situation, but I think that speaks to the nature of this race. I mean, look, um, you know, Republicans have a choice on Tuesday in Alabama, and they can choose not to send a man who preyed on young women and girls to the United States Senate. I think it's as simple as that. And I think strategically, if he's elected to the Senate, um, it's going to be a big problem for Republicans in 2018. Yeah. And, and you got to wonder here, Josh, you, the president now really uh, down uh, yesterday. First campaign trail for Roy Moore. Now a reportedly a robocall. What can he say in this uh, that will make a, a big difference? What can he say? I'm not sure. Yeah. I think yeah. it certainly is their best effort to uh, to get Republicans out to vote. But this has repercussions beyond what happens on Tuesday. We're in a situation where if we even get close and we're talking about it, which we are right now, that's mm -hmm. a win for Democrats. If we actually are able to take the seat, that's great. If we don't, Republicans have to deal with Roy Moore in the Senate. And Donald Trump has just campaigned for a credibly accused child molester. And that's something that they're going to have to live with for a really long time. And I think something that is going to have serious repercussions in 2018, 2020, and beyond. Yeah. So uh, this, is, this is a problem for them. And you cannot help but those who have come forward, those who have said, you know, I, I was harassed, I, I was assaulted, that I'm going to come to the microphones, I'm going to go to the papers, I, I don't have anything to gain from this. So, so they were saying here, Lauren, and what that might mean if Roy Moore wins, what that might mean for those who are survivors and those who may now remain quiet. You know, I think, it, especially if any of the any of the women that have come forward to share their story are watching this, I want you to know that even if Roy Moore wins on Tuesday, that the, that this does not diminish the bravery that it took for you to share your story. Um, you know, I find those women to be incredibly brave um, in doing what they did, and and women everywhere um, who have come forward to share, you know, a moment um, that they have found themselves in in cases of sexual assault and harassment. Um, even if Roy Moore is to win, that does not discount the bravery that, the, that those women have shown in this really important time. Josh? Yeah, Lauren's exactly right. And I think it's important that we remember as we're going through this that it's important to hold men accountable, but it's also important to be lifting up women and supporting them and making sure that we get more women elected to office positions of power. Uh, that's the only way we're actually going to sol solve this. Lauren, as, as that is happening and that, that difficulty, uh, there is this uh, unfortunate thought that, well, this is a test on the president's Teflon quality for him as well. Uh, all the accusations and allegations against him uh, and what that means going to 2018. And we don't want to over politicize it, but you hit it so well, both of you, on what, what's at focus here. And those are the women. Uh, 20 seconds quickly on what your thought is on that. Well, you know, I think this is a it's a very difficult time in our country. I think that we're having a moment of reckoning about what this all means. Um, you know, it remains to be seen what will happen um, mm. in future elections um, and how people will, re will react um, to the accusations that have been made against the president. Right. OK, Josh, I owe you one. Josh Warren, I appreciate you for coming by on your honesty. Lauren Zelt, also uh, thank you and have a very good weekend, whether it's uh, dry or not. Uh, that wraps it up for us here this hour on MSNBC. I'm Richard